All right, hello, and welcome to sort of a new series I got going on here. Um, I don't know what inspired me to get into this, but this is going to be a bit of like a um, like a network programming slash socket programming series that I'm going to um, just start doing. I have lots of ideas for things that we can do. And uh, so, yeah, that's what this is. Um, so this video is going to be very introductory to sort of show you what the process is and what this is going to look like and what this is all about. And I'd imagine it's going to be pretty short. Um, I'm going to get out of the way here. Uh, <clears throat> so I got Azure here and then uh, over here I have this uh, link is in the description. This is a Geeks for Geeks uh, tutorial on socket programming getting started and uh, yeah this is the one link is in the description they got this explanation they got this diagram feel free to read through this if you like uh, but basically they they just give you this server.c program and this is a server-side program to demonstrate socket programming. And they got it all here. Oh yeah, sometimes it asks me to log in. Uh, and then they have client.c, and this is the client to connect to it. And for this to work, they, they want you to run it on your local machine. But uh, what we're going to do in this video is we are going to actually put this on an Azure virtual machine an actual server that's going to be online uh, running Ubuntu and everything and we're going to connect to it from 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 Windows 11 or from Windows subsystem for Linux more specifically uh, so let's jump right into it um, it's actually really easy to get a box going if you already have a box if you did the last video you can use that um, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and make a new one just for this tutorial they're so easy to just just to just create so right here on the home page I, I made my subscription um, I did have to link a credit card but they give you $200 free credit for your first month and then honestly like if we go into cost management here um, the amount of money they're charging for you to do this it is it is such a small small amount because um, I'm I'm picking the absolute bare minimum tier the cheapest one they got and uh, I started on <clears throat> I forget like the sixth sixth or seventh I don't quite remember uh, I think it looks more like maybe on the 11th and here we are on the 20 so 10 days later and it's four dollars uh, this is way and and I left this thing running 24 7 so the rate at which they're charging you is way less than minimum wage for hiring a, an actual human to to work at your business uh, so it it's pretty cost effective and and there's a lot of opportunities to learn so if you're paying 20 bucks a month for Netflix or if you're paying for this subscription service that subscription service if you want to learn stuff th this is a, a great investment honestly I think it's totally worth it <clears throat> okay sorry I was looking at the pretty graph okay so once you're here this is just sort of the home page landing page all you need to do is click quick start switch over to projects and guides and click deploy a virtual machine oops I accidentally clicked it but that's okay we're gonna get a Linux box and then uh, your subscription is what you set up the resource group, this is sort of like a folder that you could put your different stuff in. So in this case, I'm going to put one virtual machine into one resource group. If you have different projects going on, it's a good it's a good practice to separate them into different groups so you can close down that project easily or monitor that project more easily and keep things organized. So I, I am going to create a new resource group. I'm going to call this Socket Programming uh yeah i like that name i think it sounds cool virtual machine name we're gonna call this i'm gonna make up so you can make up whatever you like i'm gonna call this like um alpha alpha vm just a random name i just came up with 
I'm going to pick my region to be West US 3. In availability zones, I'm going to do no infrastructure redundancy required. Uh, we're developers simply hacking around with socket programming, network programming. Uh, we really don't need the production tier that Azure can offer. We just want to get on a server. Uh, Ubuntu server 18.04. I'm actually going to do the newer 20.04. And security type standard is fine. 64-bit uh, is fine. We're not going to do ARM. I'm not even sure why ARM is an option. I guess if you have... Oh. You get better performance. That's something I might want to look into. We're not going to look into this today. But that, that looks pretty interesting. Um, I might want to try that out. Okay. Uh, so we're not going to do that for now. Uh, spot, uh, just because I haven't tested it yet, we're not going to do that right now. Um, the spot we're not going to use. And then the absolute cheapest is B1LS. SSH key is good. Username, I like to put mine as Seekirk. That's what I use for, for my username. I'm going to change this to Seekirk AZ900. I'm actually going to change this to Seekirk Alpha. Seekirk Alpha. Alpha VM. Seekirk Alpha VM. That looks good. Leave that as default. We'll go to disks. We don't need premium storage. I'm going to do the hard disk drive, the cheapest they got. Um, close that. Okay. And this is all fine. We'll click next. This is all fine as default. Network security group. It's all fine. Click next. Yep, this is all fine. We'll keep going. Yeah, pretty much everything is going to stay default. I'll just click next, next. Okay, and we'll click create. Okay, we need to download this private key. So I'll go ahead and download that. We're going to save it. And let's save it. Um, I'll just save it on my dev folder for now. Save. And we'll come back when this is done deploying. Okay, that is all done. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our deployment. Go to resource. All right, and so our resource is looking good. We have a public IP address. Um, our DNS name not configured, but I don't think we need to set that up. We do need this IP address. Let's go ahead and get connected on SSH. And here is where we are going to need to switch over to WSL. So give me just a second here. Full screen on that. Get the increased font size. Clear. So the key that we downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and right click and copy it. And then I'm going to click uh, here in the file explorer. I'm going to go to Linux and I'm going to go to, we're in 22.04 for my local installation. I'm going to go to home, Seekirk, and I'm just going to put it into my SSH folder. So I'll just paste that there. So now it's in there. And because it's there, my .SSH folder is here. And there it is. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to change the file permissions for that key. So I'm going to paste in that command and I'll do dot SSH, uh, Ckirk alpha, enter. And then we just need to copy this command here and paste it there and change our file path to dot ssh ckirk alpha enter and i'll say yes 
And now you can see that our uh, prompt has changed here and we are now logged in on this server. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna do a sudo apt update. And then we're going, going to do a sudo apt install build essential. Might be apt get build build essential. Oh, whoops. Sudo apt get install. The link is, or the command is in the description. So I'm going to say yes. And this should give us a compiler, the GCC compiler. Okay, that's all done. And let's do gcc-v. And we got gcc. This is looking good. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to vi server.c. And now we're in vi here. We'll head over to our socket programming code. I'm going to click this little copy code link. And then I'll just simply right click, oh, I'll push the I key to do the insert mode. And then I'll simply right click and it's gonna paste everything. I'll hit escape colon W. Uh, I'm not gonna type Q yet. I'm gonna use the up arrows to go up here. Let's take a look at this code. So define port 8080. Uh, you can pick any port number you want as long as it's not already in use and as long as it's not one of the reserved port numbers. Um, I guess in this example, we'll keep 8080 the same. Let's make this, <clears throat> let's make this message customized. So I'm gonna push the I key for insert. Hello from server. This is um, C Kirk, exclamation mark. And I'll do escape colon W. I'm not gonna quit yet. Let's just scan through. We're keeping port 8080, that's fine. And um, and yeah, so basically all this code is gonna do is it's going to create the socket. It's going to wait for someone to come along and say, hey, I wanna connect to the socket. And then it's gonna let them connect and then it's gonna be all done. Okay, you know what, rather than, instead of messing around with it, let's just see if we can get it to build. So what I'll do is I'll hit escape, colon WQ. And if we head over to our instructions, they give us the building command down here. I'll copy that, head over to here and, oh, cancel. We didn't get it copied. Oh. Oh man. Oh, this went to the next, oh my gosh. Everything terribly. There it is. Copy, paste. Of course I hit the backslash. So that gives us this server executable in our same folder. So I'll just do a dot slash server. And it sort of seems to be stuck, but that's not really a bad thing. That just means that the server is running. And if I hit control Z, it's, it's still running in the background. Uh, if I come over and I get my sneaky command here, link is in the description, to check if anything's binded to this port, we're on port 8080, we can see our server command is binded on that port uh, and it's listening. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and to get back to our server, I'm just going to do FG. So now it's back on the foreground. Okay, so I'm going to leave this terminal window open. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a second window. And I'll put it right over here. Uh, let's see now. Just put them side by side. And... Uh, right where I'm at, I'm just going to do a vi client.c. And let's go get the code. Close that. 
So here's the client.c. I'm going to copy this code, uh, push the insert key, paste it in there, and hello message sent. What is our hello message? Hello from client. Um, insert key. Super star. Escape colon WQ. And let's get that compile command. Uh, copy. Paste. And then we're just going to simply, so now we have an executable for the client. There's the executable client. We'll just do dot slash client, hit enter. Connection failed. Oh, connection failed because we need to set our IP address. So IP address on the client is right there, that, that one. We need to change that. So let's jump into our Azure. We will go to overview and we'll copy this public IP address and we will switch on the client code here, switch into insert mode. And the client needs to connect to our server at this IP address, escape colon WQ. Let's compile and let's run it. Okay, so nothing's happening. The only thing that we need to do now is we need to actually open up the firewall to allow connections to come in. So these guys are both kind of just stuck and waiting. Um, and while we're at it, let, yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and open up the firewall. So we're gonna go, to do that, we're gonna go to our VM from this overview tab, we're gonna go down to networking and we're going to add an inbound port rule from any source for any port ranges to anything uh, on the 8080 port. That's fine. And any protocol, we can switch it to, t let's do any protocol. So this is a pretty uh, lax security rule. We're gonna allow that type of connection. We'll click add and it says success. And so now let's head back over to our terminals. And I'm just going to hit control C to break out of them. And I'll start them again. Uh, before we see the results of this demo actually working, uh, I just wanted to briefly talk about why this works and why you should care. Um, and so to explain this, I've jumped over to our friendly chat GPT. Let's go ahead and get that font size a little bit bigger. And I'm going to ask ChatGPT, our guest star on the show today, what is POSIX? POSIX stands for Portable Operating System Interface, and it is a set of standards that define a common interface for Unix-like Unix -like operating systems. So when we talk about Linux, when we talk about Ubuntu, and a lot of the times we're running on an Ubuntu server, we're talking about Red Hat, um, all these different Unix distributions that act as our server, uh, they, are, they are POSIX conforming. And one of the uh, nice things about POSIX conforming is it, it basically opens up and uh, abstracts complicated things uh, away from your program and puts the burden on the operating system to take care of. So, um, in this particular example, we are seeing that POSIX, uh, POSIX compliant operating systems are providing us with a way to have sockets. So more specifically, let's ask ChatGPT, what is special about POSIX.1G? So POSIX.1G is a version of the POSIX standard that, where does it say it? Uh, ChatGPT kind of failed me here. Uh, so POSIX.1G, uh, which was ratified in 2000, uh, gave us the socket API. 
Um, so, so the ability for us to create sockets and really abstract away how we're communicating over the internet to a remote host, um, that's all done with the power of the operating system. So the very bottom line that I want to communicate is this. If your operating system calls itself Unix or Linux, if your operating system claims to be POSIX conforming or POSIX compliant, what that means to you is you're going to be given things like F open. Like if you write to a file, everybody's done a program. I hope everybody's done a program where they write to a file or they read from a file, basic IO. Uh, the nice thing about POSIX is you can write to a socket just as easily as you can write to a file. So if it's POSIX compliant, the operating system just gives you nice little functions that allow you to create a socket and connect to a remote host and have communication take place bi-directionally just as easy as it is to write to a file uh, if you're a C or C++ programmer. Okay, let's take a look at the results of our, our demo here. And there it is. Uh, so it took a little bit for that firewall rule to actually open up. Um, but uh, yeah, you can clearly see that the server on our alpha VM got hello from client superstar. And then the server sent out its message. Meanwhile, the client said it sent out its message and then it got back from the server. This is C Kirk. And that is exactly what we said our code should do. If we take a look at the code for both of these guys, we're going to send our message and say that we sent the message. Oh, we're gonna read the message, print the message, and then send the message. Um, and then the client will send the message, print that they sent the message, and then read the message. And then they're both gonna close and shut down. All right, well, that pretty much concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed that and found that interesting. We're gonna to start to expand on this series and start to do some interesting projects with this. And I think there's a lot we can learn here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.